ராம 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 gratefully we have offered all the nama lotuses at the lotus feet of bhagwan for the prayer for the entire world especially the world in general and india in particular every nama that we utter will definitely go to the target it will definitely go to the prayer for which we have been singing that some help from somewhere sometimes most unexpectedly will go to somebody in distress somebody in need of help so every nama that we chant together especially together will definitely achieve its aim of helping people who are suffering the covid patients this is all that we can do staying put at home not being able to go out but this we must do now i think it's almost one year back april the first wave was at its peak and that's when i requested gayatri girish vidya vijayan veena raju and sunanda the whole group were coming here as often as they could to start a forum online so that bhagwan's nama could be chanted for the sake of those people who were suffering from covid that was way back april 2020 and they started with great enthusiasm and excitement because this was one way they could all help and what was more <coughs> they could also connect deeply with bhagwan yogi ram sarat kuma and they started in all earnestness <coughs> and because of the situation it was at its peak like it is today i asked him to continue the chanting for 108 days continuously so this forum was working online with about 35 to 40 members 
with Gayatri Girish leading the singing for 108 days and after that, of course, it became much less and then it became bi-weekly instead of 108 days continuously. Half an hour they would be chanting and half an hour they would be talking about the Leela Sapabhan. As I said, I started the whole session with the paradigm, one Leela a day will keep the Maya away. Now we could change it to one Leela a day will keep the Covid away. So this bi-weekly forum was going on very well the good response and Vidya Vijayan's friend Srimati Priya Ashwin joined it also. She says she comes from a family which has been blessed physically. The whole family for generations they had been coming to see Sheshadri Swami of Thiruvannamalai be blessed physically And it's a joint family also. But after she started to attend this forum, she began to like this Nama, Yogi Ram Sarakma, so much. Those people had come here, a group of them, and taken Nama, Nama notebook. And she started to write. She says, Ever since she started to write the name and chant, she derived a certain peace and joy which was increasing, in fact. And so she got more and more drawn to this Nama writing and everybody in the house began to see her writing this Nama. She would write only twelve times a day just before going to bed. It became a habit and it was well known to everyone at home. In the beginning she also had some confusion because they had been worshipping different Mahatmas and gods. Now this was a new addition to the family. She herself was in a bit of a dilemma. But then soon she got the clarity and what was more, her closeness, her kinship with Bhagawan increased to such an extent that she began to see clearly all the gods, all the Mahatmas are in him. What a progress! It doesn't happen easily. And she became very close to Bhagawan and she kept writing and chanting. Now, this was a Covid period and that's how the forum itself started. What is a forum, by the way? A forum is a public facility to meet for open discussion on any subject. It could be a place or a method or a facility. So they opened it online and Yogi Ram Kumar was always the topic, his name, the glory of his name, the glory of his worship. Now, because of the Covid, the children began to stay at home. Priya has a daughter who was at that time 15 years, she was doing her plus one. Naturally, the children began to get more and more involved with the laptop, video games, especially movies. Her daughter was no exception to it. She is Kimaya Amrita. The 15-year-old Kimaya Amrita was more and more drawn to seeing movies, especially in the night. And soon it became thrillers 
and soon it became the horror movies see how children innocent children are influenced by these no matter how much her grandparents were objecting to it telling her so many ways so many times to give up seeing this horror movies she could not give it up it was like an addiction to her at the same time slowly slowly it was beginning to affect her at one point she came running to her mother and said ma i am very scared everything seems to be scary i am unable to sleep my nights are restless sleepless then immediately priya said priya was watching all that she was praying to bhagwan she was hoping that her children also would take to this nama chanting but then she could not impress upon them she could not impose it on them either so she just kept watching and praying to bhagwan in the meantime this girl came running to her and complained that she was unable to sleep that everything was scary priya said why don't you listen to your grandparents they've been telling you all the time to give up seeing this movie then you will be all right but that did not work it was an addiction and she could not give it up now did she get any sleep and then she had also been seeing her mother writing every night before going to bed priya with great involvement would write the nama yogi ram sarakma so she came and said ma what is it that you are writing then priya was waiting for this moment she said okay why don't you also take take to this writing the nama you think this nama will help me of course it will help you in many ways why don't you take to writing that was just the right time and it hit the target now kimaya amrita was impressed and she needed badly she needed some hold so she started to write the name priya was saying look you see me writing it before going to bed and you see how nicely i sleep so why don't you do it and she began to do it and after she wrote the name she took the notebook and kept it under her pillow and went to sleep next day morning she came running to her mother and said very excitedly ma the nama did magic i was able to sleep and i felt very secure that there is somebody for me i don't have to fear anything and she was happy for the first time the kid was able to sleep just writing 12 names 12 times the nama of bhagwan the girl came and reported that it worked like magic and after that she started to write one day priya found that bhagwan's photo she had kept in a certain place and it had disappeared and then she understood that her daughter had taken that photograph of yogi ram sarakma she began to keep it under her pillow now she did not miss a night sleep and then but she kept saying now you see she was more and more drawn to her mother's writing the name so she came and mother had filled up many pages by then and that kind of impressed this kid she had just started to write the name and therefore it was only a few pages where his mother had written most of the notebook so one day priya to her surprise found her notebook missing and then her 
daughter came the next day morning with great excitement and happiness, said, Ma, your Nama notebook works the best. I was not in the least disturbed yesterday night. I slept very peacefully, joyfully. It's all because of your notebook. Now, Priya became curious. I said, why would you say that? You've been keeping Swami's photograph under your pillow. No ma, whatever it is, all that was okay, but your Nama notebook is something special. Why do you think it is special? It gave you more security than Kimaya reported. You see, Ma, you have written so many Namas. Your notebook is filled with the Namas, whereas I have just started to write. And when I keep your notebook under my pillow, it's as though Bhagwan is with me. I feel him being with me and I feel totally secure. I feel completely rested. Just see how Bhagwan got into this little Kimaya, Amrita. Priya was wonderstruck. How could a horror movie can lead somebody to God? What a wonder. It's Bhagwan's knack, way of turning everything into a blessing. Didn't Bhagwan say so many times, those who work for this beggar, those who chant this beggar's name, my father would turn all the difficult situations into great blessings. Now Priya understood that a horror movie can turn a kid to God. But this is not possible for everyone. It was possible because of your Viran Sarkva. We remember the story of mango. In Sudama, a mango had dropped. It was the rainy season. The mango, which was so beautiful, hanging there up on the branch, very invitingly, found its way somehow to the muddy, the slush of the ground. Three days before I saw it hanging there, the next door, mango tree. I even contemplated plucking it and making chutney out of it for Swami. But then the one thing that held me was, Swami wouldn't like anyone else's property. It would have been stolen and uh, Swami would not like it. So I just let it at that, but poor mango, two days after it was bitten by a monkey and it had fallen down and that being the rainy season, it found its way deep into the earth and only a quarter of it was visible over the ground. Even that was stained by the slush here and there. And after two days, there were fungus, white, yellow, black. It was a very disgusting sight. Sometimes when there was a let up in the rain, Swami and I would take walk within the compound of Sudama. And when we were walking up and down, Suddenly I saw this mango and then I wondered, my God, how it looked three days back and how it looks now. Oh, the mangoes also have fate. And Swami saw my attention arrested on the mango. He too stopped and then he said, Devki, go bring that mango. It was so disgusting a sight because it was already bitten by a monkey and there were fungus all around. And added to it, there was a millipede which was climbing over that. You can imagine my disgust, but Swami wouldn't easily give up. He said, Devaki, go, bring it. So I had no choice, so I removed the creature 
and then brought it out and immediately I wanted to rush to the kitchen to wash and bring it because I knew what was coming. It's, I was thinking about the fate of the mango and now I thought it was not complete until it found its samadhi inside my stomach. I felt that Swami was going to give it to me to eat. felt very disturbed. I was about to run to the kitchen when Swami stopped me. No, Devaki, there is no need to wash. He said, bring a knife. You can imagine my plight. So I went there, brought the knife. Swami sat there and he was looking at, he was looking at mango. Everywhere it was stained, either by fungus or by the slush. And there was one clean spot and it was a delectable yellow at that. Swami said, you see this spot, Devaki? This beggar would like you to cut it and give it to me. So I cut that portion. I gave it to Bhagwan. Bhagwan ate it with relish. One should have seen the tender expression on the face of Bhagwan and the joy of eating a mango. I was wonderstruck. How could anybody eat a portion of this mango that was so stained, so disgusting to even look at? And what was more, after biting into it, he gave me the rest to eat. And it was so tasty. I didn't mind because Bhagavan had already taken it and it was prasad from him. But I found it very, very tasty. Now I knew why Bhagavan asked me to cut it. He knew how tasty it would have been. But then there was a deeper implication in all this. Two days before, a letter had come from somebody who called himself a wholesale sinner. He was demanding Bhagawan to do something about this because he was unable to save himself. Only a Mahatma could do it. So he was challenging Bhagwan. What could what can you do for this sinner? So I was reminded of this gentleman who wrote that. And when I was looking at the mango, I was again reminded of the same man. And that's when Bhagwan asked me to bring that mango and cut that portion that was clean. He gave me to understand that no matter how sinful a being is, there would still be a spot of goodness in them. And the Mahatmas would enter through that. Nothing is ever disgusting. Nothing is too small for them. We remember the story of Sri Ram who said, Bhagwan who makes the clouds thunder, he hears the sigh of a butterfly. So no detail ever escapes the attention of the Divine. No matter how small it is or how big it is, it is still a detail worth attending to. So here, through a horror movie, by scaring a good girl, an innocent girl who was being misguided by her own interests. He entered through the horror movie and changed her, brought her to his fold. This story impressed so much, impressed me so much, I thought it carries a message for every parent that the elders in the house must see to it that the children are well brought up. The upbringing is very, very important that it should be based upon the values of our own culture. Instead of rough handling the children who were, who are misguided, we could 
lead them in a very gentle way to the divine to the nama chanting to the glory of the name because the name works the name helps the name saves now this bhagwan is here right in front of us his shila murti which is no shila at all he is so vibrantly alive there with a smile on his face and to him we shall submit our today's prayer bhagwan through a horror movie we entered the heart of her an innocent kid to save her from the path so much so the girl wanted her mother to get a notebook for her also from the ashram that she wanted to write constantly so if you could change like this if you could bring about a transformation bhagwan we beg you to do it to the present world also the present situation we beg you again and again to intervene with all your divine power to extricate the entire humanity in general and india in particular because of what is happening here the horror stories that we hear bhagwan please arrest the rapid spread of the disease and bring back normal see to the world in every aspect of life we beg you again and again to root out the panic from the hearts of people and enter those medicines and make them work and all those people who could not get a room in the hospital who could not get oxygen enough and many many have been forced to stay at home isolate themselves without any of those facilities and many are suffering for want of income there is no food to eat only you can change you can bring about a transformation one compassionate glance from you will change the whole thing overnight we beg you again and again for such a transformation a fast a very quick one so the world will have some relief and bhagwan all those great soldiers laboring day and night for the sake of the others by fighting the disease only you can give them protection and we beg you also a lift to our economy and above all constant remembrance of the name constant nama chanting nama writing or at least as much as we can which should be so much and also the attitude of being a good instrument in your hands always not being caught by the snares of maya and bhagwan give us that transformation which would purify our mind so completely that we can see only your presence and your blessings in every happening of life jai ogiram sadguru